The Elgato Stream Deck has been marketed and also mostly recommended as this amazing tool for your live streams, where you can set up shortcuts to switch your scenes and mute your mic and all that good stuff. Now, while that's absolutely true, I do use it for live streaming, pressing a couple buttons here and there. My main use of the Elgato Stream Deck, and that is every single day, is for video editing. See, this is my Adobe Premiere profile, and when I'm editing, I basically do not have to use my actual keyboard at all. I just keep my hand on the Stream Deck, and from there, I can cut, I can ripple delete, I can save, I can speed up the playback, set in and out points, ease in and ease out on keyframes, insert clips, and even undo. Now another software that I happen to use a lot is Adobe Photoshop to create my thumbnails and make some graphic design stuff. But I actually don't have a profile for the Stream Deck for it. And of course, you read the title. The reason I'm making this video is because they just dropped a new Photoshop plugin for the Stream Deck. Now, the Stream Deck MK2 is the only one that I have on hand right now. I do not have my Stream Deck Plus. It's arriving soon. But I'm still going to install the plugin and we're going to take a look at it. I believe I can still customize my Stream Deck Plus even though I don't have it, there you go. So we'll still be able to have a look at all the options that the plugin offers. Short link seems to be elgato.com slash s slash adobe. It seems to be very marketed for the Stream Deck Plus and understandably so because of all the dials. Look at that, you can do color correction by turning the knobs. Oh, and they're offering two free months access to the Creative Cloud. So let's scroll down and click uh, get the free plugin. Brings you directly to the marketplace and I can click get. You need to sign in. I always forget my login. There you go. It wants to open Stream Deck. Please do. It's already open. Taking you back to Stream Deck. Okay, so technically it should be installed, I believe. Uh, I don't see it. Open Stream Deck. Okay, that's weird. I'm going to close the Stream Deck app and relaunch it. There we go. Am I missing something? Let me reload this. Open in Stream Deck. There it is. Okay, cool. <laughs> let's create a new profile on the Stream Deck Plus and let's see what we have so far. So we have undo, redo, play action, layer scroll. Oh, that's actually pretty cool. Set blend mode. Okay. Layer control, adjust hue and saturation, and then select tool. So let's imagine that I have my Stream Deck Plus right now. And let's set undo, redo, action, undo, redo. Very simple. Play action would ask you to basically pick a specific action. So default action, for example, is adding a vignette selection, frame channel, and a bunch of stuff. Look at that. Even Photoshop tells you that Stream Deck is connected. Is that a random image? I'm going to set this to the side. So default actions are basically the, if you've never used the action tab, it's going to be so confusing to you. But basically right there, we're going to have a bunch of default actions. And those are the things that you can trigger. You can also create your own actions and of course, bind them there. For example, resize is actually a custom action that that I have to compress or just resize some images. What else? Layer scroll. You can just go up and down the layers list. If you have like many layers, it would probably do this, this, this. Set blending mode. And blending modes are right there. So you can probably like darken it, screen, color dodge. Those are the blending modes. Overlay is one that I use a lot. So I can probably set just a button to set everything to overlay. Whoop. Layer control. I do not know what that is. Create new layer, duplicate layer, lock on lock layer, add mask layer. That's something that I use a ton. Fly an image. Never use that. <laughs> Create hue and saturation adjustment layer. I use that a lot. Okay, that's pretty cool. Toggle layer visibility, of course. Let's say add mask layer. Let me invert this control I. So adding a mask layer to this, for example, is what you would click at the bottom right here. And then you can go over it with a brush and determine what's going to be transparent or not, depending on uh, the brush's transparency. For example, if I don't want the head, I can just click and that part will be transparent. Adjust hue and saturation. You can even pick the color range. So if you want to just affect like the blues and change the colors of the, well, the hue and saturation of the blues, you can do that. And then step size. So you press and it basically goes up or down depending on the increments that you choose here. That's cool. What else we got? Select tool. Oh, it's just like select a specific tool, brush tool. Now that is the kind of shortcuts that I have on my graphics tablet, which I don't have now. <laughs> so this is going to be useful in the meantime. Boom, brush tool for sure. And it's funny because this doesn't look like there's a lot of actions, but those cover most of the uses. And when it comes to the dials, what do we have? And we have to click on dials top right here and we have undo redo okay all right layer control what do we have create new layer so we have touch here so you can basically press the screen on the stream deck plus and also long touch we'll have the same settings here and we can set a different one for the long touch at the bottom here it says scroll up scroll down so i'm guessing if you turn the knob it's going to select a different layer or is it saying that up and down is going to create a new layer and then create a new layer mask that's up to you to test <laughs> 
All right, we have hue here, increase, decrease. Yes, okay, okay. So it was saying that it would scroll on the layer list. All right, back to hue. You can pick the color range, the property, hue, saturation, lightness, and then the increments. Nice. Let me go back on my normal stream deck. I'm gonna create a new profile. I like to put undo and redo on the top right corner because it's like easily accessible without looking at the stream deck itself. Then bottom right, I'd like to have the brush tool because that's something that I always select. Here, I wanna put the add layer mask button. I can also set my layer scroll here and another layer scroll there. So here's gonna be up and that's gonna be down easy. I'm gonna put select tool and I want the rectangle tool. Let's put a duplicate layer top middle. And then I'm not gonna lie, for the rest, I can just use the normal stream deck like shortcuts. So system, hotkey, in order to do everything else, I can just click control S and boom, I have a save one and go save. To be fair, some of those also, for example, the tool selection, if I wanted to select the, the pen tool, I could put a hotkey with P. And when I go here, you will see around there, if I press it on the stream deck, where is it? Boop. It selects the pen tool, but the stream deck plugins allows you to select a specific one. So if I wanted the curvature pen tool, then in that case, it would be better to actually use the select tool, scroll down and have curvature pen tool right unless you want to do the keyboard shortcut of pressing i believe shift and p nope control p nope definitely not control p <laughs> so right shift p there you go and then you can switch between all the pen tools but yeah so there is absolute value i don't want you to be like well i already had mine and it was just that there is absolute value into this so yeah Combining that plus creating your own actions, I'm not gonna lie, I created some actions and I totally forgot what the keyboard shortcut was. So that's gonna help me. I think overall, this is a pretty useful thing and I'm excited to actually use it. I absolutely have no idea how much you guys care about that kind of stuff. So the views will probably reflect it. Anyways, in the meantime, go out there, make me proud. Get level, out.